Hi YouTube! So, I have been working on a new project lately and uh, it all started with my loaders are being way too big you know, it only takes one bucket and the trucks are full so I sat down and I designed a smaller loader and this one is fully electric let me show you the model that I made and uh, then I'll show you the features of the finished product and then we will begin the build process so this is the model that I designed uh, I designed the model the same way as always I find pictures on Google and I find the measurements on the real machine and then I scale them down to 114 scale and then I just sign the thing from the pictures I I find so the biggest challenge with this model uh, was definitely the geometry on these uh, lifting arms and the bucket. Uh, getting all of these uh, measurements and all the links and everything working together that was a real nightmare. I think I have it uh, pretty dialed in but it might not be perfect but at least it's uh, performing quite well. So I'm going to show you the model now, it's over there. So this is the model, it's fully operational, uh, everything, all the electronics and lights and everything is installed. I just had to assemble it beforehand so I knew that these actuators were strong enough to lift this whole bucket. And this is not a, this is not a very small bucket either and it can fit the controller. So, so let me show you some of the parts that I used. Um, these tires, they are from Lesu. They are the 110 millimeter outer diameter tires. Uh, they are excellent, in my opinion. And I bought some seat lights from AliExpress. Uh, both these front lights and uh, cabin lights these are the super bright things and the actuators are also from Aliexpress uh, I'll give you the specs on them later in this video uh, this loader has four drive motors total you can sort of see them down there it's uh, one motor per wheel so you can open the cabin door and insert your driver and there's also pre-made holes for the wires to the lights and everything and this is where all the electronics are located you just grab onto the engine cover and lift it straight off so here's the battery compartment let me turn on the lights yeah and there's my receiver obviously and the ESCs and the counterweight I just put here. Now this uh, battery compartment can fit a large battery. This is a 3S 5200 milliamps. And it just slides in there. You also have two work lights on the rear, same as the real machine. And you also got these tail lights. I haven't installed them yet. But there are holes down here that lead the, down inside this motor cover so you can run the wires down. The rear wheels can flex 20 degrees total. So it means now it is horizontal. It can flex 10 degrees up and it can flex 10 degrees down. Like this. I'm making a few different buckets uh, for this loader as well. 
Now this is the uh, heavy duty rock bucket. And I'm making more of them, so there will be a lot of options for this machine. Also, there's a lot of weights put inside this front chassis, right inside here in the middle. And the same goes with down underneath inside here. There's, you can see them. And also these uh, uh, fuel tanks and whatnot, they are full of weights as well on both sides. The machine weights roughly 6.7 kilos right now and it's it's more than enough. Uh, it fills the buckets and it digs the bucket into the ground quite a lot. So let's fire this thing up and I'll show you the movements of it and how it works. Here's the controls that I put on my loader. I run uh, the loader with this stick and then I run the, the arms and bucket with this stick. So here's when I push forward, the loader of course goes forward. And backward. And I push this stick sideways to make it turn. Push this one down to make the arms go up. And down. And I tilt the bucket by pushing this one sideways. And I also made uh, this angle quite big. So when you roll the bucket backwards, it will collect the mass and you don't have to raise the arms up all the way, like so. This is a nice feature to have on the loader. Well, I think that's enough of me blabbering about this loader. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to show you the videos of uh, me testing this loader outside in the wet conditions. And then I'm going to disassemble this whole thing and we can reassemble it on camera so A couple of hours later and the uh, loader is in pieces. <laughs> mm. And here's the electronics that I put in my loader. Uh, this is uh, professional work as usual <laughs> now I know it looks like a rat's nest but it is what it is now this is the Hobbywing 1060 ESC this is what I use to drive the the wheels 
And then we got uh, these cheap knockoff ESCs. They are also called uh, 1060. And I use them for the actuators. One for the swing, one for the lift, and the last one for the tilt on the bucket. And now that that is out of the way, uh, let's begin building. Let's begin with the cabin. So in order to mount the cabin onto this interior, you're going to put it on top and then put screws in here, here, here and here. So in order to install the door, uh, you need a one millimeter steel wire. Uh, you cut it at the length that you can see the uh, cabin is. So what you do is just put the door in and slide the, the steel wire down into the hole on top here. As you can see, I have already Put the lights on underneath the roof. Now these wires uh, they're supposed to go into these grooves that you can see in the corners of the cabin. I don't tighten down these screws yet uh, because there's another piece going on top of this roof but that piece needs to be painted before I install it. Let me turn on the lights for you. Um, on this cabin part, there are holes on the inside here where you can run uh, wires for your lights and whatever you want. Well, that's the cabin finished so far. Uh, let's continue on to the front chassis. So this is our front chassis. Uh, some of the parts already have sticky weights on them because they were on them when I disassembled it. So let's get to it. We'll begin with the front axle. So the front axle is finished. This is as far as I can go on assembling the front chassis. I have to paint it before I continue. So let's put this aside and begin assembling the rear chassis. Now 
Now, before we mount this uh, top part onto the chassis, we have to install the steering actuator mount here. And you'll notice there's two holes, so you can mount two steering actuators if you want. But I haven't tested it. You know, on hydraulics, uh, two steering cylinders, they work well together, but once they're electric, they have a habit of uh, working against each other, so they burn out. So be careful about that. Sadly, this is also as far as I can get on the rear chassis. I need to paint it now before I continue, because if I attach this and paint it, I can't mount the steering actuator afterwards. And I can't mount the rear bumper yet, because then I'd have to take it off anyway to get the rear axle in place through this hole. So these are also going to need to wait. Next up, let's uh, assemble the rear axle. Now the rear axle is super simple to assemble. It has a symmetrical design, so you can place it uh, that way or that way. So that's the rear axle finished. Now this is going to be painted and then I'm going to press bearings in here. Now this is how it should sit in the chassis and it can swivel like this. Our next step before we paint the thing is putting together the arms. Now this is also very simple. So we have four pieces. Uh, what you have to be aware of when you're going to mount these together is you're going to look at the holes. These are not countersunk, but these are. So you need one countersunk and one not countersunk together. So it should be like these two are going together and these two are going together and you also need uh, the pendulum for the bucket There's one thing I have to say, uh, and that's these holes are supposed to have bearings in them, and I will put the bearings there, but in the files in the newer version of the loader, uh, this hole is not on the inside, it's on the outside here. So I'm going to press the bearings in now, uh, but you don't have to. You should paint the, uh, the parts before you press the bearings in.
finished and ready for paint. These are the actuators that I use. These are for lifting the arms. You can see the specs on them here. And these are one for the tilt on the bucket and the other one is for the swing. They are the same, so you can see the specs. And yes, for those wondering, I was planning on selling these files on Cults 3D after I have tested the loader and know that it can <laughs> take all the fun and all the stress. Well, that wraps up this video. Uh, all the parts are now ready to paint and I'm probably going to start painting them tonight. Hopefully I'll have uh, the next video ready in a couple of days or so. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you liked the video. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.